Joining us now from Richmond, Virginia, the state's governor and former chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Terry McAuliffe. He is demanding a briefing after major changes from the Trump administration in immigration policy. Very good to have you on the show, Governor Terry. Um, good morning, Mika. Good morning. good morning, Joe. Good morning, morning. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm talking to you from the greatest state in America, the Commonwealth of yeah. Virginia. Uh, oh, I want to ask you about okay. that because as I we... I was going to say, what was he doing? Where the first like immigrants came in 1607. Three ships from England, 1607. They didn't go to New York or Maryland or no, Pennsylvania. No, they came no. to Jamestown, Virginia. It's because they knew You're Donnie's right. descendants were in New York. So, <laughs> given <laughs> that, Governor, uh, I'm second generation of executive side, order. Right. Um, it, it, if and when it comes out, um, are you going to yep. honor it? And especially with Stephen Miller saying it's basically like the first one, uh, in in, yep. in essence. <laughs> Well, what we've said here, uh, we have three pieces of legislation coming through my legislature, which I will veto. We will not turn our local law enforcement into ICE officials. I, you know, I deal with the sheriffs. I deal with our state police on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't want this. First of all, they're busy doing their jobs, keeping our communities safe. They are not federal ICE officers, nor are we going to have them become federal ICE officers. My concern with this whole issue is, you know, I was one of the first people to get out. I went to Dulles Airport. Uh, when I found out that a family was there detained for hours with two children with U.S. passports, detained for hours without access to legal counsel. This is not an America we know. Now with these new ICE orders, they now have the authority to just randomly stop anybody they want. We should be using it for law enforcement to get folks who are bad actors, get them out of the country, I agree with that. But what you're going to have happen is people are going to be driven underground. They're not going to, if they have a communicable disease, they're not going to go to hospitals. Right. They're not going to work with law enforcement. I saw the sheriff of Pima County, Arizona yesterday, said this is horrible. No one will work with law enforcement. And finally, this is going to be very dangerous to our economy. Yesterday, I was at an immigrant store up in Northern Virginia, where 32% of our small businesses are foreign-born owners. It is a crippling, it's scaring people. This was a company that came here from Afghanistan in 05. 60 employees today, they are terrified. Wow. That is not how you build a country. Working together, take the walls down, let right. us grow. That's why in Virginia, our unemployment's right. gone from 5-4. Yeah. I got it all the way down to 4-1. 185,000 new jobs, lowest unemployment mm. claims since 1971. Right. We are cranking here. Terry, 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 we got 87 people on set. We got to ask you questions. I want to hear what Lightning Terry round. Has to say. Come seconds. to Virginia. I, yes. I, I don't even remember what that question was. You got it all Virginia in there, Governor. Virginia is for lovers. <laughs> Governor, it's Willie Geist. Good to see you. Virginia um, is for lovers. Okay. 296 wineries, 181 craft breweries, eight varieties of oysters. A lot of Low wineries. Low taxes, business what are you friendly. Doing, a lot of oysters. Making okay, good. A so, Governor, but you let me ask you a question yeah, about, about this immigration <laughs> order. As you know, President Obama deported yeah. more people than any president <laughs> in American yeah. history. Now, with this new order, what we know about it, it will broaden who can be deported from the country. It's not just someone who That's has committed right. a, a violent crime, but anybody who's come into the country sure. illegally. Do you stand by the Obama position that people who've committed crimes at least should be deported, illegal immigrants who've committed crimes? Sure I do. A absolutely. People who've committed crimes should be deported. And first of all, why are we in this situation today? Because I honestly believe the benign neglect from Congress for years and years, we don't have a nationwide immigration policy. We are not going to deport ourselves out of this problem. We are not going to deport 11.4 million people. Just stop that talk. You're scaring people. At the end of the day, we need a comp comprehensive immigration policy. But the concern that I have, and we had a case uh, in Virginia the other day at a church, a hypothermia center, where we had individuals who went overnight to get out of the cold, came out, ICE agents randomly confronted individuals. The first person was a legal resident. We now have ICE officers stopping people on streets right. with a photograph saying, do you know this person? If they say no, they continue to ask questions. If we've changed our policy in this great nation, that all of a sudden we can randomly stop whomever we want, I think that is very dangerous for the greatest nation on earth. It's the principles, the civil liberties right. that we've enjoyed, Donnie, we need to be careful. Governor, I want to shift gears for a second. I want you to take off your governor hat and put on your old DNC hat, chairman hat. Yep. Uh, we've been watching the town halls, uh, the, the rage, the passion. Uh, we're only two months into this presidency and, and uh, 22 months away from uh, 18. What would be your kind of strategic direction to keep this going? How do you kind of fan that flame and keep going? What's also interesting is in none of those town halls was anybody bringing up immigration. Yep. yep. Uh, first of all, to fan the flame, what has happened is the Trump administration is going at issues that directly affect individuals' lives. 
They are scaring people. They're changing what we have done for hundreds of years in this country. So this passion isn't going away. If I were the DNC chair, I'd do exactly what we're doing here in Virginia. We have elections this year, lieutenant governor, governor, attorney general up, including the House of Delegates. We now are filling every single seat we are going to have an opponent. There were 17 districts in Virginia that are held by Republicans that Hillary Clinton carried in 2016. We have already filled every one of those seats. We need candidates to step up. What bothers me the most about the last election is 92 million people stayed home on election day and they're all saying oh I don't know how this happened now they have woken up saying my goodness it happened get out there register to vote and actually come out and vote in elections the first test is going to be Virginia we have New Jersey and Virginia governorships up this November that is the first test to show the outrage that we are not going to take America down a different path we are the greatest nation on earth I always disagreed with this make America great again we are great I travel the globe I have done business all over the globe. I love coming back Sounds to like this you're nation. Running, we any, are the any best. chance you're going to run 2020, Governor? I mean, it's just I'm feeling it from you. I'm feeling mm. the passion. I'm feeling the burn. I got I got 11 I got 11 months of making this the greatest state and the greatest nation on earth, the Commonwealth of Virginia. I'm going to finish out here strong. But literally, we're doing great. Yeah. But I have had to veto a lot of very anti anti women, anti LGBT. <laughs> Why are we cranking it on business? Because we're open and welcoming, low taxes, business friendly. I got oceans. I got mountains. <laughs> Dolphins, they come up to the beach, they pick up your children, they give them rides. We don't have sharks. We got it all here. And your governor's for lovers. Virginia's for lovers. And has no sharks. Thank you so much. Hey, Mika, Still Mika. Oh, wait. Oh, wait Mika. There we go. Yeah. Uh -oh. I want to say one thing to Mika. Okay. Think of this tonight when you go to bed, Mika. Uh -huh. Our first oh, wow. governor, Patrick Henry, started the American Revolution. Our second governor, Thomas Jefferson. And now, Terry McAuliffe. <laughs> I don't even I want what he's having for breakfast. We're out of here. Yeah. Is this not a Terry, good country we live next time? <laughs> okay. When two, okay I thank you. Uh, <laughs> when two of the president's top advisors take the stage for a joint interview at CPAC today, they're going to get a chance to squash rumors that they're at the center of competing power circles. Oh, that'll White do House. it. We will get a preview. Plus. <laughs> you know, I tweeted today, at real Donald Trump, I tweet. And that's, you know, it solves it. Don't worry, I'll give it up after I'm president. We won't tweet anymore, I don't think. Not presidential. That was then-candidate Donald Trump talking about his Twitter habit on the campaign trail. What happened? Hmm. You're watching Morning Joe. What, what did just happen? Nope. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.